practical. This is the part of us that's grounded, that wants results, that wants to know how long is it going to take, how much money is it going to cost, money, practicality, nail it down, put the T's, dot the I's, make sure everything's done. We got insurance, how are the tires in the car? Get everything covered? Let's make sure we get things done. Make a list. Oh, they love that. Checking things off the list. That feels so good to earth people. The air person's going, where is the list? And the water person's going, I'll help you. Do you want me to get you your list? So the earth person's like, no, we've got things to do. Don't be helping me. I've got to, I'll tell you what to do. They're very organized. They're very dictating at their worst. They are leaders. They're people that have very specific style. And if you don't do it their way, they don't get you. They're like, forget it. I'll do it. They have very little tolerance for mediocrity. They want high standards in everything they do. They can't understand why people don't live up to their standards. They're very judgmental. If you're not like them, they think you've got a problem. And they have a real thing about control. It's mine. Do it my way. Well, why don't we just change the rules? No, you don't change the rules. Why do you think we have the rules? That's inappropriate. Big word for earth, inappropriate. The value of earth is they're solid as a tree and they will always get the job done. You never have to wonder, will they be on time? They're completely reliable in their heart, loyal as the day is long. When they love you, they love you. When you get it wrong, they'll still love you, but they'll make some noises. Did you do that on purpose? I have a question. Are you studying or are you just pretending? Because if you're going to get this right, you got to make money on astrology. You got to get results. This is not just a practice of thinking. How many clients do you have? Do you have insurance? Dangerous. That's earth people. So their whole value in life is nailing it down, making sure we're safe, giving you security, and really providing you with enough substance of safety, security, and a feeling of being protected. That's their strongest impulse. Highly ambitious. They're worry warts. This is the part in all of us that if it doesn't feel right, they get scared. So they work on all the things that could go wrong. Their sensibility is always to go negative first. That's an earth person. I'm a little worried about this, they say. Now, you don't really want to take this risk. Let's go for the safe version. So they give you a certain quality of fear when they do things. And they don't like to share easily. So they're going to stick money under the bed and, you know, save it. But they have to have a lot saved to feel safe. And, they, and then they'll, they'll share, but they're not going to give away, you know, without being frugal. They have a real value for being detailed and organized and conservative is a big word for earth. So they're the people that go shopping and they look at labels. They're very into nutrition. They're very into food. They're into gardening. They're into being outside and taking care of the world. And they, they really care about what they eat and they can't figure out why you don't. And the air person's going, I don't care. Sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't. And the water person's going, you're scaring me. Am I going to get a disease? Like is something wrong? If we don't eat the organic, why do we have to eat the organic? And the earth person's going, I'll give you a list. I got the research. Here, read this book. So it's a very natural impulse for them to be the teacher and to be the one to give you information. And the air person's the researcher that can complement that earth. And the water person's the dreamer that came up with the idea in the first place. So you can see how they all work together. I think Earth is the element on the planet that has been the most abused because we value money so much and being successful. Our definition in our society is you are only as useful as you are that you produce and you're successful. We don't value uh, a water person who's still and gentle and kind and healing and loves to be with kids and animals. We think that's just fluffy. But if you're earthy and you're practical and you've made a lot of money and you drive a nice car and you've got credentials, suddenly you're worthy of being given adoration. So it's a curious thing. Earth people are burdened and they often say that they're always the one that has to do the blah, blah, blah. Why am I always the one doing the dishes? Why am I always the one calling you? Why am I always the one having to take care? Because you do it. And if the earth person doesn't do it, they get nervous. You can never say to an earth person, listen, don't do the dishes. Why don't you just leave them? Oh, are you kidding? That would be inappropriate. I can't leave them. I get nervous. So they complain earth people about their life. But truthfully, they couldn't stop doing it the way they were doing it. So you've got to be very careful. Earth is the element of being on the downside, negative and whiny. It's more less whiny, more complaining. And on the upside, they're very strong leaders and they serve because they love to. I always think of Mother Teresa, that this is such an earth sign, that she had this project of the lepers in India that were never ending. 
But that was her love, was to help the people that would never stop needing help. That's the nature of Earth and it's healthy. You just give because you love to give, not because you're keeping track of what's coming back. Okay, so that would be Earth. So if we follow the day, we started the day in the shower in the bathroom, we went to the air, got the computer on, figured out who we had to talk to, looked at our appointment book, and now Earth is, what do I have to do today to check off my list? Did I get everything done? Have I really completed things? Do I feel like there's a deadline I need to reestablish my priorities for tomorrow? And then at the end of the Earth, you say, now what's for dinner tonight, and what are we having, and where am I going, and I better go get the food. So at the Earth element of the day, the Earth cycle, is manifestation, checking off your list, and preparing for the evening. Earth is always preparing for the future. Uh-oh, I'm scared, says Earth. So the low level of Earth is that they're stingy, that they're controlling, that they keep the world on their terms, and they get stuck in having a point of view that is righteous. And you can't dislodge them because they get so caught in their highest truth. And if you try to argue with them, they just argue with you in a very logical way that creates a stuck position. At the highest level, they are business people who can consider the whole picture. So their practicality still holds true, but they're gonna include the other person's point of view. And they're gonna be students. At the highest level, Earth is a very profound student of life and really has a fascination with learning. From a practical point of view, yes. It doesn't mean it's just an intellect, but they really want to figure out how is the most efficient, the best way I can do this, and what can I learn? So at the low level, they're controlling, and at the high level, they're humbled, and they've really learned the art of including the other and learning from other people rather than being the expert and the only one that knows and the arrogant one who's you know, got all this control around their money and their things. If someone's missing Earth, you want to say, this is very important, go get a routine. Like, I don't care what you do, but be consistent. So if you're going to have breakfast every morning, if people don't have Earth, they need to create. What are you having for breakfast and have it every morning for a month and start practicing routines. If it's going to be going for a walk at the end of the day, if it's getting your plants, going out and buying plants, because people that have no Earth can't do plants, and start watering them and make a relationship with that practical area of um, Earth. I say to them, go clean your closets. Like I'll say to somebody, you need to go home. You have no earth in your chart. You have no respect for the physical world. It's not your fault, but you've got to cultivate it. So go home and take care of that practical world. And of course, you know, if they don't have ways of taking care of their money, I say, you know what, go hire a financial planner. Like it's nothing's wrong with saying you can't do it. But if you can't do it, go get help. The other thing that earth people, um, they tend to either be cluttered or they're so fastidious, they get, and I say to Earth people that are preoccupied with it, leave a mess. Like, leave the house today and don't make the bed. They go, I can't. I go, just practice, just try the exercise of realizing that none of that matters. You really learn that quick when you are um, in a crisis, that all that practical detail stuff that makes you feel safe is just, it's just extra, it's excess. What really matters is being in the moment and being present and accepting your internal state. <laughs> it's funny. So someone that's lacking earth, I give them the practical exercise and, of course, find the people in the world that you know are really good at this and follow them around. Fire is the element of joy and laughter and humor and a little bit wild. It's the part in all of us that goes, okay, already with all this stuff, where is the fun factor? Turn on the music. Let's go for a run. I need to sweat. Where's the sex? Come on, give me a little juice. Crank it up. I was watching um, Britney Spears. We were doing a, an astrology project last night and found out that she was fire, surprise. And her and Madonna, fire, surprise. We're on this video together doing law. I mean, that's the nature of fire. They just love to be like, let me show you me and let me express myself and let me have an experience of being alive so we all can have a party. And so their challenge is they have an indulgence factor. Fire is the part in all this just doesn't want to stop. It just wants to keep going, even when it's time to stop and they're hurting, when their soul's in the backseat going, I don't want to do this anymore. They're like, you'll never stop. We'll keep going. They have an incredible amount of will, drive, impulse. So if we look at the um, party, we started off, we drank the um, wine. Then we started talking about old chit chat with what's her name. Then we sat down and we had dinner, the earth cycle. What's for dinner? We started doing the dishes and figured out who's bringing what. And then the fire is, turn on the music, light up. Put the fire on. Where's the party? Let's start having a joyful experience. So there's this incredible fun factor that comes with fire. And it's the part in all of us that wants to be seen. It has to do with ego. Can you see me? 
Can you recognize me? Do I stand out? Am I worthy? Fire has a great need to be applauded and to be accepted and to get feedback. So unlike the water who's going, oh God, can we go home? Fire's going, are you kidding? We're not going home, nobody's noticed me yet. So they wear the hats and the outfits and it's the part that really wants to be engaged in life without mediocrity. Fire does, there's no such thing as lukewarm fire. It has to be hot all the time. So it's the part in all of us that needs, these people medicate, they drink alcohol, I always think of it as fire water, they you know, take drugs, they do anything to alter their state because they want to be in that heightened state rather than the mundane world of being quiet and bored like water or earth. So fire is very enthusiastic, it's very physical, it's very honored um, by its reflection and it has a great desire to turn people on to spirituality, for example. It's, it's always the spiritual people that are fire that go, you have to believe in God. You have to see the big picture. Don't get caught in your small details. Or I had this great example. I was doing a radio show this week with a double Aries. God, he was funny. And he gave this example on the show that someone said to him, um, how do I look in this shirt? No, do I look fat in this shirt? And his answer was, yes, you look fat in the shirt. It's because you eat too much. Like all the person said was, how do I look? And he had to give them a whole, you know, the fire people can't just go, no, the shirt looks fine. You might want to just loosen it a little bit, but no, you eat too much. Like there's always this blunt edginess at its worst where they can't hold back. And they say the thing that you want to say, could you just change your language? So their skill set is to learn how to tell the truth and have people want to hear it. So we hear lots about, you know, the communication style, nonviolent communication or difficult conversations. This is all fiery people who are so gifted at speaking to the unspeakable. That's what they do. They speak to the unspeakable. They say what everyone else is thinking. I always think when the emperor walked in and he didn't have any clothes on, it was the fire guy that said, hey, your balls, you know, like, but everyone else is thinking it, but the fire person can't not not say it. They can't hold back. When someone's missing fire entirely, I tell them to go get music and put it on really loud and sing, whether it's in the car or it's in your house. They've got to open up their throat chakra. People that are missing fire can't get angry. They get angry and they start to cry immediately. They don't have comfort in their body with pushing. So if they can start learning how to use their voice, especially in singing, because when you sing loud and you're comfortable being loud, in the name of joy or pleasure. It doesn't take you to the fear part. And then you start getting comfortable. Wow, I can move the chi. Or going and getting exercise. I will tell people that are missing fire, you have to exercise. Like, there's no question here. If you don't move your fire, you're going to get sick. And you're going to find yourself lethargic. When someone's missing fire and has no energy, I always counsel them. I say exercise is exorcism. Because if you're holding on to stuff and it gets stuck in your body, it's only exercise that gets that stuff out. So in the day we have waking up in the morning, getting onto the computer was water, doing the meditation, air was the computer, what's my day look like, my schedule, earth was now let's do the work, check it off our list, let's make sure that we've got dinner planned and then we sit around at the end of the day in the fire cycle around the hearth, around a fire with a glass of wine and we share our stories with our family and say, how was your day? Tell me everything. And, oh, you won't believe what happened to me today. And we do the complaining and the stories and we get all juicy. So this is the natural flow of the, of the elements. People that are lacking one of these elements, and you can see by your own scores, if you're low in water, and that would be anything between five and below on the um, test on the website, that has to do with people that don't know how to feel. They're cut off. So if you lack water, it means that you really don't have compassion in an easy way. You hear a story and you're like, what's the big deal? If you're high in water, which would be seven or above, it means you feel everything. And you can cry at the commercials and you're wondering why you're feeling sad walking through someone's house or you get the wrong vibe or it's very, very sensitive. Those are people that are hypersensitive and can't find their boundaries if you've scored high in that first category. The second category, if you've scored low, they're not social. People that have low scores in error, they don't really have the interest in being able to talk to others. They find people boring. They don't have that fascination that the air people do. Like, what are you thinking? And what are you doing? And tell me a new story. They're like, I got work to do. So people that don't have air don't have that same interest and they tend to be more introverted. And as a result, they have a less 
easy time with relationship. If you've scored very high on error, it means your favorite thing is socializing. In fact, you can be overly distracted because of the intellectual appetite that you might have. And the last is fire. If you've scored low on fire, that means that you're scared of conflict. You're going to avoid it at all costs. You're going to hold in rather than speak out. And you're going to drive three miles out of the way to avoid the, the fight. So you're going to probably feel at times like you're getting taken advantage of, or you can't quite find your passion, your voice. You can't figure out how to stand up for yourself and organize your world for your own value, for your own ego, for your own fulfillment. If you've scored very high on fire, it means that you're very comfortable in being publicly seen, taking over, showing up, being physical, getting in your body and going for a run. That would be the easiest thing for you if you have a high score in fire. In fact, not being physical is like the weirdest thing. So you can see now we've just done the general, these are the four elements. And what you're going to find out as we get to the next cycle is when you take a planet, for example, you take, let's talk about Mercury just briefly, is the thoughts. You're going to learn that Mercury describes how your mind works. If we take Mercury and we put it in a water element, how would your mind work? Just think about it for a moment. If you put your mental body in the element of water, you're going to find yourself under the, you know, it's kind of nonverbal, feeling things. I often feel like water people keep their eyes closed at their favorite. So that would give me a clue of how your thought process worked. If your Mercury was in air and your thought was working on the level of socializing and communicating, I would know that you have a natural gift at making your mind go quickly and speed and intellect. If your Mercury was in earth, I know immediately that you think in bite-sized bits. You're going to be practical. Your mind is going to want to organize and organize and get things in its right place. That's how you're, you couldn't figure out how to do it any other way. And if your Mercury's in fire, you've got an impulsive mind that even if you're a water sign, this is simply one of the planets. So what you learn is you take the planet and first at this moment, just take the element. This is the very simple second to fifth grade. What planet, what, what element is my planet in? So we're going to do more of that in a moment, but we've just done the elements. So water, air, earth, and fire, my very close friends that you can't get rid of. You can't live without them. I don't know how long you can live without water for like something like 10 days to two weeks. Can't live without air more than a minute or two. Can't live without earth, without food. And can't live without fire is the sun, is the heart. I always think of the red blood being fire, the heartbeat. Give us a minute and that's done. So these are the four primary elements and they are at the center of this entire system of astrology as they are of many ancient practices from Judaism is ruled by the four worlds in the Kabbalah. The Buddhists have the four noble paths. And even in Hawaii, it's water, air, earth, and fire is their four central pieces to their whole hula philosophy. So it's everywhere. And the question is, what's the distribution you're carrying? And how do you make peace with that? And the most important question is, what of these four elements are you low in? That's what we're going to look at. Of the four elements, usually one or two feels really comfortable. And one might feel a little awkward. And sometimes there's one that you're not comfortable with at all. So you always want to balance. It's like four wheels on a tire. That's the nature of the elements and you're driving a car. And if one of the tires is low, you're going to be off balance. So I'm going to look at your chart and I'm going to say, what's the nature of the distribution? And how do I help this person? And the last and most important detail is what element is your Saturn in? And we're going to look at that more, but whatever your Saturn is in is the most important indicator of what you've come this lifetime to learn.